Listen to this one. Listen to this one, Two Punch. Um, we've played for you what Clay Thompson said about the booze. What, am I going to lose sleep over it? And what Steph Curry said about the booze, which is largely what you would expect a classy person to say. Hey, that's what we earned, the booze. I'm booing us, too, in my head. We look terrible out there. Steve Kerr, how about the booze in back-to-back games? Yeah, we deserved it for sure. You know, fell fell behind immediately, and uh, I think we're just lacking confidence right now. You know, it's it's um, you get to a, a stage sometimes where you just kind of lose your belief, and um, it happens. And that's what's happened right now with our team the last few days. I think we've um, you know we've just lost the spirit, the confidence that has to carry you. You know, against um, talented teams night in and night out. Okay, they've lost their spirit. Kendrick Perkins uh, on NBA Today from ESPN grabbed that comment and then made his own. Ask yourself why Steph Curry has been in the slump or why Steve Curry has said this team has lost their spirit, lost their confidence, right? Steve Curry is getting exposed. We saw the Pelicans, they were ready to play. We saw the Pelicans going for the 50-50 balls. We saw the Pelicans contesting jump shots. We saw Toronto go in a couple nights before and put up 133 on them. 133 in Chase Arena. The spirit comes from the coach. Stay with me. As a guy that's been in the locker room, went to five NBA finals, I know the spirit, the energy comes from what your coach is saying at practices and in the film room. It's almost like when you go to First Street Baptist Church. You going in there to feel the Holy Ghost. If you walk out of there and you got the spirit in you, damn it, the pastor did his job. It's the same thing when it comes down to the Warriors. They're playing with a lack of effort. They're playing with a lack of urgency right now. No fight whatsoever. That is a reflection of your coach. But, okay. But, 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 but. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's part of it. I also think it's uh, in part because you don't have Draymond Green, who is your energy on the floor. And I think that part of it is Steve Kerr. But individually, you have to go out there and give effort. Steve can rile them up. Steve can give them every speech in the book. We fight for that inch. It's that inch. He go through all the cliches and flip a spread and grab people by the lapels and do all the rest of it. If you don't go out there and do your job and want to win and want to compete, I don't think it's on the head coach. Hmm. Here's what I think is interesting, especially when a player says it. When things are good, it's the players. When things are bad. It's a coach. Right. Okay, Kendrick. Okay. So you referenced your time in the NBA Finals. The Oklahoma City Thunder were good because can you even name who the coach was? Billy Donovan. Yeah, Billy Donovan at times. Scotty at times. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook and James Harden and Serge Ibaka. That's why you went to the Finals. That's where your inspiration came from. You walked out on the floor and you had better players. That's what it was. So um, Steve Kerr has not had a great year. We've talked about this. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's a silly idea to now tell us that your inspiration and your want to and your diving for loose balls comes from your coach. Uh, that doesn't sound like a professional to me. If you want to be a high school player, then I'll agree with you. Sure. Yeah, because those people will sleep until 2 in the afternoon if you let them. I've got a couple of them <laughs> at home. But these are professionals, and if you can't get yourself up for games, that's on you. And, and all of this stuff, there's an underbelly to it that I think is probably dangerous for the Warriors right now. And a lot of the fans have been ahead of me on this. Stop saying that this is a lack of effort and it's a lack of inspiration and they're poorly coached because all of those things presuppose that you're still the better team, but you're just not trying. You're just not working hard enough. So are you telling me now that Steph and Clay and Draymond, when he returns, and Poughkeepsie kid, you're telling me that if these guys just try harder, then everything's okay. Why would we make any trades at all? 
You shouldn't make any trades at all if all you need to do is try harder. It doesn't mean that everything no. is permanently fixed, but it, I think that it would lead to you being in games for longer. Steve mentioned it. Five minutes into that thing, you were cooked last night. Oh, totally. And you looked flat, and I do think that that's a big part of it, is effort, sustained effort, especially on the defensive end. You gave up 46 first-quarter points, hmm. and you lost by 36. So it's not... It's not as easy as the coach goes in at halftime and breaks a clipboard or flips a spread. It's like, ooh, coach is mad. I'm going to go out there and try harder now. These are professional athletes. You're right. Part of it is on the coach to change it up, change up the rotation. Yeah. He's tried to make changes, and it hasn't worked. Nothing's worked. It's getting so worse. you got to continue to try to figure out how you can motivate right. these guys. Ultimately, they need to motivate themselves. You're right. But Steve's got to find a way to get these guys to play harder because it does look like they're just kind of going through the motions. I think they just got a bad mix. And I don't know what ingredient needs to be injected in and what ingredient needs to be left out, but it's a bad mix. Think of all the bad mix stuff out there. Kerr doesn't mix with Kaminga and Moody. Kaminga doesn't mix with Wiggins. Wiggins doesn't mix with anybody. Draymond doesn't mix with the league. Uh, you know, Kevon Looney doesn't mix with, with, with the young players. It's just all a bad stew. It's a terrible stew right now. And you can keep putting in new ingredients, and it's not going to work until it's going to work. And the truth of the matter is, is I think that the Warriors are getting pretty close to the decision that the ingredients they need are not in the cupboard. They just don't even have them right now. So that's why you go from a shakeup like, let's put someone on the bench, to a shakeup of, let's put someone on a different team. Well, and if you can't get a real shakeup that gets you new ingredients, then you're going to resign yourself to to this. And if you go four more weeks and you continue to be not quite a bottom feeder, but a team that's not a playoff threat, well, then you're going to look at maybe sitting some of these guys for the better part of the excuse me remainder of the year. Yeah, yeah. And no just doubt. go with the young guys and then... You know, look for the lottery, even though your pick's only top four protected. Um, 888-957-9570. We are about to get into your calls. Thank you to those of you who have been patient. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1, San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Let's get into it. David in Calistoga. Hey, David, what's going on? Hey there. Can you hear me okay? Gotcha. Perfect. Hey, yeah, I want to talk about two things, but you mentioned it. One thing that I want to talk about before you switched over to football, but Kaminga and Siaka, I totally hear you. They want they want Kaminga. Oof, oof, David, I hate this because you were so patient, but your phone has just completely crapped out on us. Uh, give us another try. Uh, Suge in Fremont. Hey, Suge, what's going on? You're on with Willard and Debs. Hi, how are you doing, both of you? Good, Suj. Oh, happy New Year. To you as well. Thank you for saying that. That's just ridiculous. It's the 11th. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I haven't talked to you for 11 days, so I tell you Happy New Year. I appreciate so, it, Suj. Um, Don't let him intimidate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Um, you know, I I wanted to make a comment about Wiggins, and this is something that nobody's ever brought up. You know, he's been off ever since the jo Jordan Pool incident with Draymond. And, you know, the whole last year was just so bad for him and he was gone and all that. And this year he's been really bad except for maybe one or two games. I don't remember. I'm just wondering, does he re maybe he is going to get traded and maybe he wants to be. Maybe will he go to the new team and he'll be the old Wiggins. We don't know about that. But I feel like there is a pall of gloom on this team. It's been there ever since last year, since that whole incident with Poole. And then this year, you know, we try to start, you know, like a turnover. Everybody tried to look at it and say, okay, it's a brand new year and everything. And all these things happen with Draymond. And it's like, everyone's like, okay, it's the same old story. And it's just like if I was at my job and I'm doing a good job and there are people there who are doing a crappy job and getting away with it, you know? It just brings in a lot of negativity, and 
you know, to, to make matters worse, we don't have the size and so so on and so forth. It's 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 just a perfect storm. That's what I feel, and it's just been bad because of that. Um, Suge, I, I don't argue with anything that you say, and thanks for the call. Uh, however, here's where I would push back on two things. One, I don't think Andrew was playing that bad uh, last year prior to him leaving. Right. Um, he was actually doing just fine. So um, has he been bad since the, the punch on Jordan Poole? Um, I, I'd argue no. He actually was okay for a little while, and then suddenly he was gone, and then he was back, and he was okay again. Yeah. And then th- this year it's just completely off the rails. And then the other thing, and we addressed this earlier in the week, if if you make twenty four million dollars a year, and and your skill set falls apart because you lost your friend from from your job, um, you're unprofessional. You're unprofessional. That that that's what I think. Like that is. And, and this accusation's been out there now for a little bit. It's like, I, I wonder if you all realize how soft you're calling Andrew. Like, the, and again, you might be right. Right. But the idea that Andrew can't play anymore because his good friend Jordan Poole got punched and then traded, and therefore everything just melted around him, is like hard for me to process because this is somebody who was tagged as the next big thing, the number one pick in the draft, and spent a decade scoring 19 points a game in the NBA. That is not easy to do. And right. Then, and, and, and the straw that broke the camel's back was that his friend got traded? Can't I cannot I, believe like, that that's I really just, the way it's gone. Yeah. Maybe it's a piece of it. Maybe that is the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of his desire to be a part of this organization. Maybe there are other things that have gone on that make him – not feel motivated to go out there and play and compete. And, you know, he's not the only problem with this team, Mark. If he was, then putting him on the bench would make things a lot better, and things haven't gotten better. Since they've benched Andrew Wiggins, and since they really stopped playing Andrew Wiggins, it's not like the team has been any better. It's just their problems have been different. Yeah, I I, I just... that. Again, I got no proof that that you're wrong because I have no proof that anything you say right now but would be wrong. You could yeah. call up and be like, "Andrew, I think he had a dream about a unicorn last <laughs> night," and it just and really it scared him. Yeah, it messed him up. <laughs> and I'm like, "You might be right," because it he's is, afraid of unicorns and he's been unable to shake that. It is the greatest mystery of the last five years of Warriors basketball, right? I think a lot of things are explainable. Some things are surprising. This is beyond mysterious. And right. we, we 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 did it for for two to four hours yesterday. The mystery of what has happened to Andrew Wiggins and is it permanent? I, I, yeah, I'm not even that interested in the mystery. Yeah. This is one of those mysteries where I'm not gonna stay tuned. To find out, because the reality of it is the reality, which is he's not a very good basketball player anymore. Is it temporary? Is it permanent? I don't know. The team's going to have a decision to make. If they think that this is the way that it's going to go in Golden State from now on, he's getting traded. Yeah. Even if you don't get much back for him. And we had Tim Kawakami on earlier, TK, and he was basically saying that, that they may end up trading him and not getting a whole lot back just to be done with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you listen to TK and uh, you can go on the Odyssey app and check it out if you miss it, it, it sounds like Andrew's getting traded come hell or high water. Right. Be it, be it a good deal, yep. a bad deal, or just getting pennies on the dollar. That's what it feels like the team's going to do. The trade deadline is four weeks from today. You've got, uh, yeah, it's 20, 28 days. Yep. February 8th. Yep. So between now and then, how the team plays, I think will say a lot about what they do. But even if they go on a little bit of a run, I still think that Andrew Wiggins is getting dealt. Uh, TK, earlier today, Withered and Dibs on uh, Wiggins. Yeah, I think they're going to trade Andrew Wiggins. You know, I don't know what 
is out there. I think they've got to find out what's out there. That might be the kind of hinge point. Uh, if you can upgrade by trading Andrew Wiggins, uh, by all means, I think they would, you know, if they can get Siakam for Wiggins and something else, a Wiggins and Moody or Wiggins and Pajemski, I think that helps them two ways. It gets rid of the contract and it makes them better this season. And maybe they can convince themselves that they can. And I don't think they're, you know, irrational to think that maybe that could get them to the seventh seed or make them a dangerous six seed, something like that. Something like we saw last season and I mean they, they, they'll they take what happened last season they got through the first round and then they gave the, in the Lakers a, a run for their money in the second round there it is from Tim Kawakami and then there's one more uh, because we had sort of just brought up okay what can you get for Wiggins and this is the one where it sounds like come hell or high water doesn't matter what they're getting for him he's gone if they can't get Siakam or they can't get a player of that level, and I'm not sure there's a long list of them, I don't would not put Zach Levine in that list of the player they think they could add and would make a you know significant difference to what they are this season. But maybe it's Andrew Wiggins for nothing, right? Just get off of him. Maybe they'd have to even put Moody in that just to get nothing or, or very close to nothing, just to move off that you know the remaining eighty four million dollars of the salary after this season to give themselves some you know room to think where the, every decision. You don't have the luxury tax bearing down on you. Every decision, you're not saying, well, we're constrained because we have a $4 million payroll commitment, and that's what they got. I think they would do some things to alleviate, alleviate that. I mean, you could let Clay go for nothing. You could let Chris Paul go for nothing. I just think Wiggins is the first decision. What can they get for him? What do they have to do to move off of him? And by the way, I hate that idea. I get it, but I hate the idea of maybe they package Wiggins and Moody to get nothing. Oh yeah, what? I mean, Wiggins and Moody. I get it. Wiggins and Moody's not enough to get you Siakam based no, on the money. No, but this is, I would think it'd be enough to get you something. Thirty million dollars going out with a player who was second in Finals MVP voting nineteen right. months ago, and who I think is a good young rotational player. Yeah, and you're gonna get nothing. I think that that's that's far fetched. I mean, to get. So you send out Wiggins and Moody, that's $28 million, which would mean you'd have to get something back. And, you know, I was looking at Utah and Laurie Markkinen, and there's a lot of talk that Utah may want to extend him as opposed to trading him. He's a great player, and he's only making about 14. And then you've got uh, Kelly Olynyk on that team, who's not a great player at this point, but he's making $12 million and his deal's expiring. So that would add up in terms of, you know, trying to get an actual player. I think you'd have to give up more than than Moody and Wiggins to Utah. You'd have to throw in a pick. Utah's yep. going to be looking for picks for sure. But that's a name that might be interesting if Utah doesn't extend him. Um, Steffi in Emeryville. Hey, Steffi, what's going on? Uh, all kinds of good stuff. But I um, first of all, I want to agree with you about the – the point of Jordan Poole has nothing to do with Andrew Wiggins. And what I'd like to just insert, even though I understand everybody's comments about he needs to be the first to go, Strahan, um, as, as if, if you don't know, his daughter has brain cancer. And he said something that I think can be happening for Wiggs. He said, you learn that you're probably not as strong as you thought you were when you have to really think about the real things. And I realize that I need support from everybody. And you think that I'm the athlete, the tough guy, and somebody who can handle everything because I'm a father of a family. But, you know, it's not about any of that. It doesn't matter. It's really made me change my perspective on so many things in life. And I think when you think about the fact of Andrew's father dying and his parents being such a strong part of his becoming the player that he is, not necessarily was, but the effect of a, a child having to go through the loss of a parent or a parent having to go through the loss of a child and still go out there and do your job every day when you got all kinds of shade for not being there at the end of the season should give him a little bit of compassion over comments like Jordan Poole was the reason that he's not the way that he is. Well, Steffi, let, let's jump in on this first and foremost. Uh, Mitchell Wiggins did not pass away. I, th Correct. There was there was an illness. Um, don't know much more about it, but Andrew's father did not pass away. Your larger point is a fair one. I think everybody, and what an appropriate day here at 95.7 The Game to be talking about um, what, what happens 
when life takes over and it's bigger than your job. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, um, you know, we, we've talked about it off and on all, all, all day long. Steiny is not with us. His father passed away earlier today. Joe Shasky dealing with a family emergency as well. And, and more on that to be revealed for sure. But you don't need to remind anyone in this building that life can take over and family is more important. So with all that said, I still personally have no clue what it was that happened with Andrew Wiggins behind the scenes. I can hear people's tone, those who are in the know, enough to know that whatever it was, it was a hell of a thing to deal with. But I also get to a point of, look, we all deal with that at some point in our lives. And if it robs you of your ability to do your job, I'm not going to be mad at you. But you would then also can't be mad at the organization or your boss at a certain point who's like, we got to move on. Right. right. We got to go find someone who can do the job. And he is in a job where he is open to speculation as much as fans can or should speculate about the athletes that they pay money to watch. And that's the nature of their business. It's a public business and ours to a much lesser extent. If you are just Joan in accounting and you have to take a leave of absence, it's probably not going to be one that is open to a lot of outside criticism because you're in a job that is not a part of that as the nature of your job requirement. So I understand her sensitivity and I didn't know that about Michael Strahan. And like you said, Mark, everybody in the world deals with all kinds of stuff. And, you know, this station is among it with the two things that you mentioned before. And, you know, we have to decide and they have to decide and everyone has to decide how you deal with everything that you have to go through. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that came up with Stephen A. Smith the other day, yesterday, I think it was. And uh, he made the point, again, this is one person's opinion, but he's like, look, if if that happens, if life takes over to the point where you are just robbed of your ability to function at the highest level anymore, okay, but you kept taking the checks. You kept getting paid to go to work when you didn't go to work. So I know that's only one aspect of it, and there are all kinds of things that are bigger than money. Yeah. But this boils down to two things. Sure, nothing is bigger than family, dot, dot, dot. At the end of everything, you if you're hired to do a job, you still have to do the job. Right. So if you or I or anybody was to take a leave of absence of a certain length, it would get to a point where you would have to have a conversation with management and they'd have to say, I understand you're going through it, but you know we're going to need to have somebody fill your spot at some point, and that's perhaps where the Warriors are. And again, we don't know what the off-court challenges or issues are. All we know is he is out of the starting lineup, yep. and when he plays, he doesn't play well. So I don't have to speculate about anything else. All I have to do is comment and talk about what I see, which is a guy who used to be really good at basketball and now isn't very good at basketball. Yeah.